Hello, my name is John Bluck, and I'm the author of the science fiction novel, The Ship Finder. So why did I write this book? Well, one of the major reasons was I was quite interested in advanced medicine, medicine that could result in people living much longer lives, possibly a couple hundred years, who knows, even more. And what's this based on? Well, if you look at the computer revolution, how the internet took over the world, if you will, and a lot of things have become computerized, it happened so quickly. The same sort of thing, I believe, is going to happen with medicine. There are many advancements taking place right as we speak. And this may well benefit some people, but the question is, what people will be, who will be the ones that are affected by this, who will live longer lives? Those who have great wealth, those who are well connected. Well, that's one of the things that is treated in the book, or at least referred to. And uh, so let me just turn to the book and read a little bit from my first chapter. The protagonist, the main character, is Dr. Bill Wilson. He's a physician and is jogging in a Northern California park. And he comes upon a wounded man who he thinks may either be a drug addict or a person with mental illness. So let's begin. Wilson rolled him over. Good news, no exit wound, Wilson said. Reach into my right pocket, the man said. Take my weapon, you'll need it. It will answer your questions. An odd, crooked smile formed on his pale face. Wilson found a strange dark green pistol and a white plastic page in the man's pocket. There was a diagram on the sheet and Wilson put the page in his hip pocket. The heavy plastic weapon amazed him. It had a six inch barrel, but no bore hole. Instead, a copper-like screen covered the barrel tip where bullets would have exited a normal firearm. The sight was a small flip-up gadget with a sturdy inch square TV-like screen. It had a crosshair cut into its white plastic base. Maybe this weapon was just a fancy plaything, but it weighed more than a normal toy and looked well made. What's this? Wilson asked. A ray gun. Turn it on. The enemy will soon be here to finish me, to blow me into a million bits. They'll kill you too if you don't stop them. How's it work? Wilson asked. Push the yellow button under the barrel. Wilson pressed the button and a sharp color picture popped onto the gun's small sight screen. He saw a close-up view of where he pointed the pistol. Try it. Aim at that rock, the man said as he nodded at a boulder. Wilson trained the weapon at a big hunk of granite 30 feet away, and he squeezed the trigger. A silent blue line struck the rock, forming a small round hole which sizzled. A breeze blew smoke and the acrid scent of burn rock towards the men. The weapon was soundless. We need to go to the hospital, Wilson said. My vehicle's a hundred yards away. Raven passed out as Wilson spoke. Even if the man was crazy, somebody had shot him. That person or persons could be near. Wilson sprinted to his electric all-terrain vehicle, climbed in, turned the power key and eased the ATV over small rocks that blocked the parking lot from the path. In less than a minute, he stopped near Raven, who was still out cold. Wilson opened the vehicle's back door and walked to where Raven lay. Wilson took a capsule of smell smelling salts from his panic pack, broke the lozenge, and held it under Raven's nose until he awoke. Now Wilson could move him into the ATV with less effort. Let's go on three, Wilson said. Okay, be quick. The enemy is near, Raven said, his nostrils flaring. My alarm! A red light flashed on his wristwatch. Wilson dragged Raven towards the ATV and began to sweat. The wounded man's legs wobbled as he gritted his teeth and struggled to walk. Wilson wrestled him into the vehicle's back seat, and Raven's head flopped to his chest as he again fainted. There was a pop, and bits of glass sprinkled over Wilson's clothes. A death ray had shattered the front of the passenger window. He froze when he spotted a huge cyborg charging. The brute looked like a giant blind, blonde linebacker from the Oakland Raiders. 
His arm muscles formed knots and his eyes were too close together. Wilson's heart pounded and his mouth was dry. He dove to the ground, thrashed about, and tugged to pull the ray pistol from his sweatshirt pocket. Fumbling to find the weapon's power button, he felt panic. But finally, he pressed it. The soft purr of the gun calmed him. The cyborg was the only foe in sight. But he moved fast, charging like a big cat, closing in for the kill, scattering bits of dirt and vegetation behind him. So that's just a small portion of the book, obviously. You can find out a lot more about the book, where to get it, and read more of the first chapter if you want on my website. It's www.bluckart.com. That's www.bluckart.com. And Bluck is spelled B-L-U-C-K. Thank you very much.